Hello and welcome to Bedroom Studio Corner, I'm XD and today in this video I'm going to be going over mastering and I'm going to show you how you can master this track. Now we've mixed this track in the previous video, be sure to check that out if you haven't watched that. If you're new here, subscribe. We have a lot of interesting videos on music production that can help you become a much better producer. Now leave a like before we get into this mastering and here in FL Studio, this track, I made it in my live stream and I've mixed it in the previous video. Now we're on the mastering stage. So now we're going to be on the master bus only. Now, when you're at this stage, you, you don't necessarily have to not change your mix a bit or tweak things, you know, uh, into the track again. You can do that. But for now, I'm not going to be, you know, doing any of that so long. I'm just going to be on the master because I feel that it's a good master. And I want these videos to help you and understand that there's no formula to this there's no just one preset or one thing i can tell you that will make sure that all the songs you're going to produce is going to be fine in the mix or fine in the master but what happens is that you need to understand the process of when to do things and when not to do them it's always different scenarios in the mix and in the master so i'm going to be putting out more mixing and mastering videos so you can see different instances where i master and i mix different types of sound and you can understand why i'm doing certain things so i hope that's going to help you so now let's start with this video now this is where we are with this track so far it sounds pretty decent but it needs to get you know to that nice loudness and it needs a lot more you know uh, tweaking to it you can you can do so much with a track that you know uh, um, you can work on a track for hours even the whole day even days to get it to sound perfect but for the sake of illustration I am gonna do as much as I can now that is not gonna have, make this video turn into a very long and just dry video you know so let's start with an EQ first I'm gonna start with the parametric EQ2 over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look I'm always telling people to look at your instead of just listening but you need to look at your waves and see what is going on where where is it busy where is it you know not busy where where is everything placed at in the frequency spectrum you can actually see here where things are hitting on the eq now i can actually add some low end here so i see it's lacking over here by 70. Now, just another thing to be careful about is not to add too much gain. Like, around 4 dB of gain is safe enough. Like, less than 4 dB of gain is safe. Because doing this is not going to help you. It's, it's, it's a mistake. You do not want to do that. At least somewhere here. You can go this way, but not when you're mastering. Only when you're mixing and you're trying to tweak your sound. Leave that there. Just boost it here slightly. Just lower over here. Now, as you can see, this this uh, um this high end side here is being controlled by a shelf because they would expect you to cut like this now if i want to change this because i want to boost over here instead of me pulling this one and coming to boost over here what i can do is i can just change the type of this knob this knob over here and i can turn it into a notch or um a peaking so i can turn it into that into a peaking and then i can just lower the cue so that's how you can change that in the parametric EQ if you didn't know. I want to add a bit of some crunch into the track. Like around here, around 13. Let's give it a bit of brightness. That's good and done with this EQ. Now what I'm going to add first is an, a CLA-2A. This is one of my favorite... Um, compressors and it's a classic compressor i like this compressor because it looks so vintage it adds a nice texture to your master to your whole track completely it's used by a lot of professionals so i i, I like it I, I like it a lot so i'm just going to add that there but slightly clipping off the transients the transients are those spikes that are going to be 
on the top of your um, your track okay so now that we've got this compression on let's just play it back and see how we can compress it now just keep watch of this meter over here as I'm gonna raise the peak reduction there we go it's lowering at least up to minus 3 dB of gain now I can just add a little bit of more gain Without it, with it, so it's not doing so much to the track. The next, what I can do to this is I can add Puig Tech Q5, this one here. Now, I like these EQs because they have a lot of nice you know vintage tones to them so sometimes just adding these without like really doing anything to them just adds some texture to your track it's something i've learned from watching like the, the you know uh, big sound engineers do and it's something they always add and these are some of the things we miss when we mix our music <laughs> the 700 here raise it around 2 dB the peak then I'm gonna dip around here on 2 dB just 2 here around 2, two dB. You can EQ as much as you like to kind of cut some frequencies out and boost some frequencies as well. As much as you like. Now another another plugin that I love to use to add texture to my masters is is the sausage flattener this is a very nice plugin I always love to use it looks very funny it's you know um, by dad alive but it adds very good texture and it's mostly used you know uh, on mastering and on 808s as well for your bass it's, it's, it's a very good plugin for that as well but it can get really aggressive like as you can see the sausage gets really angry and can be happy so you just need to slightly turn it up so i'm just gonna add a little bit of it just add texture to my track slightly i'll add in some color let's add like two percent so add a lot of color here Let me do it before and after, without, with, now as you can hear, that is like a fatter sound, it sounds much more different, let me do that again, without it, and with it, so it's, it, it didn't just give it gain, but it gave it texture as well, and made it feel like really wholesome and really nice, so now after all of this, what I can use now, is now add an EQ to kind of see where I'm at and make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be now this is not the only way you can master there's a lot of ways you can master but it's up to you and the process that you're trying to do and how you're trying to get things done so now when we're here what I can do is I can add let's say a fab filter Q at the end I'll just put it on um, post EQ so I can see what is happening after the EQ. That's what I love about Fab Filter. You can see what's happening before the EQ and after the EQ or both. So I'm just going to put post EQ so that if I boost something, I can see what I boosted. So I'm just going to raise some of that highs. So 
I can see there's kind of a roll off here. I'm just gonna lower this section over here because it's very busy. What I love about fab filters is that you can actually solo the frequency that you're trying to filter out so that you can listen to it like that by holding this little headphone knob over here, this little headphone button. Yeah, it's very busy over there, around 900. Let's drop that down. that's all good and done now we can get to the limiting now we can add um, a fab filter limiter as well or we can use a waves but I love the fab filter pro L it limits for me very good and it has a lot of nice presets that you can use here as well and I like that it actually has house presets and minimal house so I'm just gonna use a minimal house preset a punchy low end and crispy transients that what works wonders <laughs> So what's easy about this um, limiter, it just has one gain knob, so just lift it to a safe position when not too much is being limited by these reds over here, but only when you get your transients being kind of uh, uh, toned down. And the transients that I want to come down is usually my kick, because that's the most loudest thing, so I don't want it to go too high. And at the same time, I'm not trying to kind of sausage out my track. But I just want it loud enough. So now let me play back the track without the mastering and then with the mastering so you can hear what we did here and what, what difference all this has made. This is without very soft very gentle now with it sounds refreshing now it sounds very solid it sounds like something that's ready to be released something that's gonna pump the club without with very simple look at it here very amazing the transients so that's it that's it for this video that's it for this simple mastering that I wanted to do for this track now I'm gonna share with you guys I'm going to share this track with you guys so that you can hear the final product of this track. We've mixed it together and we've mastered it together and I've shown you how to do this. I'm going to keep putting out videos where I mix and master tracks and you can see from start to finish how you can get to mix and master. Not just one video or one mastering chain is going to help you become better at mixing or mastering. That's not how this works, but it takes time and practice for you to understand your own way of doing mixing and mastering. The way I master is not necessarily how you're going to end up mastering your tracks, but out of each video that I make, I expect you to at least catch something new, even if it's not your style of a video that I'm making, even if I'm making a genre that you may not be into, but you just need to watch it because you can get something out of that video that you can learn that's going to help you in your own specific style and whatever it is you make. For me, when I learned mastering, I didn't learn mastering for engineers that engineered hip hop or house. I looked at people that engineer country music, rock music. Those guys are legends. They, they are the best. And it's the same people that make these plugins that we are using and these VSTs. So they are the greats at mixing and mastering. So that's the people I learn from. People like Dave Pensado, you know, people like Ross Hogarth, people like um, Andrew Ships. 
these are big names in the mixing and mastering aspect of music like in the whole world so there's people uh, you know I've, I've always tried to learn from and i've always been googling and seeing how they work so i can know beyond what you know the normal small time producer can do for me so that's why i know so much and that's why i've chosen to use mostly waves and fab filters when i'm doing my own work and my clients work so i hope this video helps you to kick start your mixing and mastering and give some insight on how to do these things and again if you're new to the channel remember to subscribe leave a like if you like this video if you haven't watched the mixing video of this track you can go back and watch that but besides that uh, that's it for this video i'm going to check you guys out in another video thank you for watching i am x and i'm out peace